So this is going to be uh, another video about PSA negative prostate cancer. Uh, and in a previous video, I talked about endocrine differentiation. Uh, these are obviously not easy topics to talk about, so I've really spent some time thinking about how to explain it. Uh, so this is even more difficult than the neuroendocrine differentiation. Um, so follow me. It's called mesen epithelial to mesenchyme transition. Call it EMT for short. But basically, it's a key mechanism by which the cancer spreads uh, and does a number of uh, other nasty things. Uh, and in this case, the cancer is replaying a part of fetal development. Uh, mesenchyme uh, are cells that go on to form uh, things like bone, blood vessels, lymphatic tissue, etc. Uh, prostate cancer is a carcinoma, and it develops in the epithelial lining of tissues uh, uh, or the skin in case of skin cancer. Uh, and so in this case the original adenocarcinoma that prostate cancer starts out at, the cancer cells are stuck together. Uh, they adhere to one another with what is essentially a molecular zipper. And uh, this prevents cancer cells from breaking loose and spreading. Uh, so when these cells switch from an epithelial to mesenchymal state, they lose that molecular zipper, and they're free to invade and spread. And when they get to target tissue like m bone, they switch from mesenchyme back to adenocarcinoma and grow. So clearly interfering with this kind of thing uh, would be useful. The problem is that same process is involved in healing. If you cut your skin, uh, the cells in that region undergo this switch so they can migrate in and fill the, the wound. Uh, so one of the problems besetting cancer treatment uh, for this EMT phenomenon is you would also block normal healing after surgery, radiation, and so on. Uh, so it's been tricky. At this spring's cancer meeting, uh, Dr. Beltran, who's been featured in one of our newsletters, uh, showed that the PSA negative prostate cancer cells had a mix of neuroendocrine differentiation and this primitive fetal aspect that allows for invasion and spread. Um, and in some, in some way, the neuroendocrine and EMT biologies are mixed together in prostate cancer uh, and uh, under coordinate gene control. Uh, and this particularly emerges uh, uh, with the new hormonal therapy agents, Xtandi and Zytiga, not because these drugs are bad, but they've so completed the testosterone removal that the cancer has to switch this other biology to get the job done. Uh, in the mesenchymal state, the cancer doesn't have testosterone receptor and doesn't need testosterone to do its thing. Uh, so. The struggle we have uh, in prostate cancer treatment when we initiate hormonal therapy is can we find ways of blocking both neuroendocrine trans, uh, trans differentiation or this EMT phenomenon? Uh, and it's a very hot area of research. And I'm really excited because uh, there are some sound, fairly easy to implement uh, treatments that you could add to hormonal therapy to affect this. Uh, and I, others share this interest. I'm not alone in this. So where I see hormonal therapy going next uh, is what do we do uh, to prevent the escape route this cancer has around hormonal therapy to this PSA negative state. Um, so the, the other aspect of this mesenchymal state uh, is mesenchymal stem cells are very effective at keeping the immune system at bay. Uh, they 
produce proteins locally that paralyze the immune system. So ironically, uh, not only is this a part of hormonal therapy, but one of the challenges in immunotherapy of prostate cancer is how to deal with the fact that these mesenchymal cells can have an adverse effect on our immunotherapy approaches to this malignancy. Uh, I hope this helps you to get started in this field. And as exciting results come in, we'll update you uh, to the treatment options and ideas and concepts that are being put out there uh, as they come along. Enjoy.